Hello, in this lesson, I will compare raster, also known as bitmap images, to vector graphics. In order to start this, though, we, you first need to know that Photoshop is mainly a raster editing program. Um, and to help you understand what raster is, you need to know that when you open a JPEG file or a camera raw file or one of those other raster files, we'll talk about more of these file types later. When you do that, you're working with the raster image. I tend to like to call them bitmaps more because it describes to a limited degree how the computer thinks about these files. They're maps of pixels on the screen. They're not really maps of bits, but sometimes you think of a pixel as like a bit of information. So bitmap kind of describes it. So if you look at a closely at a computer screen or your TV at home, if you have an LCD screen or a plasma screen or whatever, you're able to see that it's made up of little squares. Each little square has a location on the screen, a color, a saturation, and a certain amount of black, or we call it value. Um, that's hue, saturation, and value. I will demonstrate this by using a color picker in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna, right now this is, has Adobe Illustrator. It's a drawing that I made earlier today. And here's the same drawing in Photoshop that I've uh, rasterized. I've turned it into a bitmap image. But at any rate, I'm going to look at this blue right here. I'm going to kind of drag in. And then I'm going to double click on the color picker. And don't worry, we'll learn about these in a little while. Now notice that when I have this, uh, this eyedropper, when I choose double click on that color picker right here, and I go along here, you can see that the, the blues are darker up here and they're lighter down here. I'm going to click on this blue right here, and when I do, when I click on it, notice the hue, saturation, and value, or the black, they, they call it B, of this, uh, of this particular pixel that I click on will show up there. Notice that the hue is 208. Don't worry about what that number means right now. Its saturation value is 62%, and its black value is 81%. Now I'm going to click up here in a darker area of the blue, and notice what happens to the hue changed a teeny bit, but the black value went from you know, 82 to 78. So it, it was a little bit darker, isn't it? Now you could also look at, at it from a, this, this area right here is hue saturation and black or, or value. This one is the red, green, and blue. And if we click on different areas here, it's going to have it. And notice I click on the orange here, it'll, um, it changes all those things also. It also gives you a cyan, magenta, yellow, and black value if you're using a CMYK. These all give different um, color values. I mean, uh, other different ways to register the color for the computer to think about the color. Hue, saturation, and black, red, green, and blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And then these are called lab colors. I honestly don't know how to use those. But right here, it has a hexadecimal um, code for um, color also. That's another way to look at it uh, or to think about it. At any rate, um, so you can select different color values by, um, by, by using that color picker right there. But, but the point of it, of, of what I was doing there, was that I was showing you that when I click on a color, it has a different different hue, saturation, and black or value, or RGB or you know, CMYK color schemes. Now, but I want to get back to the main purpose of this video, which is a comparison of raster and vector graphics. Um, right now, I have two applications open. I have uh, a, I have Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Right now, it's showing Photoshop is on top right here. I'm going to just bring Adobe Illustrator on top. Uh, it, it's, I'm just going down to my taskbar, which is out, off of the recording area of the screen. But anyway, in Adobe Illustrator, I created, the, like I said, I created this earlier. I created this scene, and and this is now Illustrator's uh, program on the screen. Notice that I used a magnification tool. I'm going to click on that magnification tool or the zoom tool. I'm going to come into an area right here. I'm just going to create a little square and zoom in. Notice as I zoom in, really closely that all the lines remain crisp even the curves remain crisp the shadows have a nice easy gradient that you can see there uh, a gradation between you know lighter to darker this is what a vec this is what vector graphics do 
the line and curves are based on ratios and mathematical equations, so that when I zoom in on a portion of the image, the computer recalculates the lines to keep them smooth. After I created the scene in Illustrator, though, I'm going to go Control zero to zoom out, zoom out to a few, full view. But after I created the scene in Illustrator, I exported it as a JPEG image, which is a, a raster file format. I'm going to switch over to Photoshop now. And I'm going to go Control zero to zoom out to the full view. But after I created the scene, I opened in Photoshop. I made it, I rasterized it, and then I opened the same thing in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, this is a JPEG image. Notice it's kite.jpg. That gives us a hint that that um, .jpg lets us know that this is a JPEG image, which is a, a file format that's a raster file format or bitmap. Notice as I zoom in, I'm using the zoom tool here. I can, the shortcut key for that is Z. So if I just press Z, I can get to that tool. Or I can just click on the zoom tool there. Notice as I zoom in on kind of the same area, we get, it turns in, when we get close, it turns into those little pixels. But if we, I'm going to, I'm going to um, right click and I'm going to, I mean, alt click and go out a little bit. I'm going to grab up here and go to one of these edges on these scribbles. And this is easier to see. See how pixelated that gets? The edges get nice and jaggedy. Um, that's because this is rasterized. It has a bitmap. It's not recalculating all the relationships of these lines and curves. It's just zooming in on them. I'm going to go back to Illustrator. And I'm going to zoom on in on that same area. Notice how as I zoom in, it still remains very, very smooth, even when I'm going up to 2,400%. If I go back to Photoshop, and if I, if I zoom in to 2,400%, I'm going to just notice I'm just pressing and writing 2400 right there. Notice how it's just it's just straight, you know, you can see the, the each dot, each pixel on there. And each pixel has its own hue, saturation, and value, or CMYK. Uh, by the way, this is using a CMYK color scheme. You can see that right there. I'm going to go Control-0 again, zoom out. So while we're all the way out, I'm back in Illustrator. Now I'm going to go Control-0. While I'm all the way out, the, the images look pretty similar. I'm in Illustrator right now. I'm going to just toggle over to Photoshop. They look fairly similar, although the um, Illustrator file looks better. At any rate, so when I zoom in on a raster image, it becomes pixelated, meaning I can see the little squares it's made of. The computer is not recalculating the ratios of the lines. It's just magnifying the little pixels. So. You ask now, why would I use a raster image when a vector graphic can maintain such amazing detail as you zoom in? Well, that's a good question, I say back to you. Here's my explanation. When you take a picture with a digital camera, it does not vectorize whatever it records on the memory card. It doesn't change it from a raster image to a, a, a vector graphic. Um, Illustrator can make a vector graphic out of, um, after, out of a raster image, but the... Um, it takes a lot of time. The results are unsatisfactory because it has to reduce the number of colors that it's using. Uh, the way Photoshop is right now, if we if we bounce back to Photoshop here, when we zoomed in right here, you can't even tell very well as it goes from this shade or or this shade of blue to this shade of blue. You can barely tell the gradations between there. And if we had to vectorize it. In, uh, in Illustrator, we would end up with bands of color even more pronounced than you can see right now. And, and by the way, you're looking at even a more um, compressed version. So you are probably seeing some banding right here more than what I'm seeing on my screen because uh, when it compresses for a video, it, it band, it, you get color banding a lot. But at any rate, for, for now, when the image is recorded, it's a bitmap image when it's recorded on the on the um, camera's um, CMOS chip, and then when it gets moved over to the the SD card on your camera, um, and it, that's and it records a bitmap when you record it on your camera. And bitmaps, especially now with those really high resolution cameras that are getting up to, you know, 15 to 17, sometimes over 20 megapixels, which is millions of pixels. Uh, you're, we're getting such high resolution that it's just fine to do it as a bitmap and plus for working with pictures in Photoshop it's easier to work with a bitmap than a vector graphic and so that is kind of a about a 10 minute explanation of the difference between vector and bitmap graphics